It's advised to select your enemies carefully and your friends as well, since friends can turn into enemies. This tale is about a woman's friendship that ended tragically. Today's tale centers on Renee Marsden from Sydney, Australia, who was raised alongside her three siblings in the nurturing household of Teresa and Mark Marsden. This family was characterized by its warm ambiance, yet Renee shared a particularly close bond with her mother. Teresa spoke of her daughter as an exceedingly kind, joyful, and tender-hearted young woman. In 2010, as Renee celebrated her 18th birthday, she juggled roles as both a hairdresser and an administrator at a salon. It was here she encountered Angus, a colleague. Initially, they barely noticed each other, but eventually, Angus realized he was in love. Garnering the courage to express his feelings to Renee, he was delighted to discover she reciprocated. Shortly after, they became inseparable, quickly making plans for their life together. Nevertheless, their romance was abruptly shattered. Renee was devastated by a message from Angus, confessing he had merely been using her, wasn't prepared for commitment, and had desires for other women. This revelation turned Renee's world on its head, making her once orderly life, aspirations, and cherished moments feel utterly insignificant. She retreated from the world, forsaking food and the outdoors, preferring the solitude of her blanket. Renee shared a close bond with her high school pal, Camila Zaidan. Despite their lives taking them in different directions, Camila immediately rushed to Renee's side when she heard about her breakup. Eager to cheer Renee up and help her navigate her heartache, Zaidan suggested she begin mingling with new men. Specifically, she had someone in mind whom she thought would be an excellent rebound for Renee. This person was Braden Spiteri, Camilla's ex, with whom things hadn't worked out due to a lack of compatibility. Nevertheless, Camilla was convinced that Braden and Renee were a perfect match and encouraged her friend to pursue him, confident he'd make an ideal companion for Renee. Initially hesitant to engage with anyone, Marsden had little interest in meeting men. Yet, as the sharp sting of her recent breakup began to fade, she opted to take a chance on the enigmatic Braden, sparking their phone-based romance. From their very first exchange, Renee sensed a profound bond with him. Without having met him face to face, she already felt that deep, unspoken connection one finds with a soulmate. Their conversations were ceaseless, spanning day and night, filled with endless texts across social networks. At 23, Spiteri was a product of a prestigious royal academy and belonged to a rich family that owned a thriving construction business. Discussing Braden with her mother, Teresa, Renee couldn't help but flush with embarrassment. To her, he appeared flawless. They shared numerous interests, and Braden aspired for the same life goals that Renee cherished. The sole issue was Braden's consistent unavailability for dates. He never outright rejected meeting up, yet there always seemed to be a reason they couldn't spend time together. In the early days of 2012, a few weeks into their budding romance, Renee embarked on a two-week familial cruise, during which she was unreachable due to the absence of cell service. Returning home, she was confronted with harrowing news from Braden. Previously, he and a dear friend had been implicated in a grave motorcycle mishap. His friend perished, and Spiteri was at the helm. The inquiry concluded his lack of attentiveness behind the wheel had led to manslaughter charges against him. Amid the ongoing court procedures and hearings, he refrained from disclosing this to her, fearing it might alienate the woman he was fond of. However, with his sentencing to two years' imprisonment, he found it impossible to keep her uninformed any longer. Renee was heartbroken by the dreadful news but chose to persist in the relationship. Once Braden was detained and confined in Goulburn Correctional Center, he gained access to a telephone, which enabled them to rejuvenate their connection and elevate their communication through text messages, as making phone calls was perilous for him. Braden declined the opportunity for visitations to shorten his sentence, aiming to be released by Renee's 21st birthday, envisioning a celebration together. Renee completely understood and was prepared to make sacrifices, at least temporarily. 
She was convinced the two years would pass quickly, after which they would wed, and nothing would keep them apart. For their shared future, she was willing to accept certain limitations, knowing that navigating this challenging time was essential. Even with Spiteri imprisoned, they dedicated ample time to online conversations about their wedding, honeymoon, and life thereafter. Rene even reached out to the consulate to confirm if Braden could travel internationally for their honeymoon, despite his past offenses. Braden managed to send her bouquets and presents to charm his partner. Acknowledging the difficulty she faced due to the lack of physical closeness, he proposed she fulfill her sensual desires not with other individuals, but with her closest friend, Camilla. He expressed no objections if Marsden accepted this proposition, yet René firmly declined, choosing to await his homecoming. Conversely, Camilla appeared quite taken with the notion of closeness with René, frequently questioning the specifics of René's exchanges with Brayden, probing how Marsden dealt with her sensual needs, and at times, becoming overly inquisitive. Camilla rang multiple times daily, and if Renee didn't respond, she would flood her friend with countless texts. Oddly, Camilla started displaying envy towards Renee's other companions, and would even complain if Renee spent a whole day with her mother, Teresa. One evening, Camilla dialed Renee's number 54 times, leading to Marsden addressing her clingy conduct the next day, labeling it as excessive. Rather than offering an apology for her actions, Camilla turned up at Renee's doorstep, initiated a quarrel, and resorted to verbal hostility, a surprising behavior from someone deemed a close friend. Following a heated exchange, Camilla made an unexpected move to kiss Renee, which Renee rebuffed, citing her exclusive attraction to men. Nevertheless, Zidane managed to convince her to partake in a physical encounter. Post this event, Renee consulted with her mother, Teresa, divulging their experimentation but stressed that her preferences did not align with same-sex relationships, a stance she quickly made clear to Camila. They agreed to overlook the episode and move past it. Yet, Zidane's peculiar actions persisted. Renee even shared emails from Camilla with her mother wherein Camilla confessed her deep love and yearning for a union, insisting that Renee couldn't deny her affections and that no one else could love her more profoundly. She threatened to shadow Renee persistently if spurned, vowing to be an incessant presence until Renee consented to be her companion. Teresa, alarmed by these admissions, urged her daughter to sever the bond and steer clear of providing any grounds to prolong their association, comforting her with the notion that Camila would eventually settle down, find a male partner, and abandon her illusions. Nonetheless, Renee hesitated to abruptly conclude their friendship. Teresa then implored her to proceed with utmost caution. Teresa's maternal instincts were validated when Renee found herself compelled to terminate the long-standing friendship for her own well-being, which led to Camilla reacting with rage, bitterness, anxiety, yet continuing her dogged pursuit of Marsden. Initially, Renee chose to disregard Camilla's attempts at communication. Simultaneously, her connection with Brayden began to suffer, especially when Brayden frequently brought up Camilla, suggesting Renee mend their friendship. Despite Renee's attempts to dissolve their relationship due to Brayden's incessant urging, unforeseen calamities in Brayden's life made her reconsider each time, pulling her back due to her compassionate nature. Firstly, Brayden disclosed his mother's diagnosis with a brain tumor, a situation he found distressing as he couldn't support her physically. Another incident saw Brayden becoming the victim of an assault in prison, leaving him severely wounded. Renee perceived Brayden's influence as increasingly detrimental and was on the verge of breaking away, yet unforeseeable events and her parents' advice to either leave Brayden or consider other suitors kept her from making a final decision. Her parents hoped that diminishing her emotional ties with Brayden would encourage her to permanently sever their relationship. In his attempt at reconciliation, Brayden proactively contacted her parents trying to assure them of his good intentions and compatibility with Renee. He persisted in sending romantic messages to Renee, urging her to reconcile with Camilla and to forgive her, which eventually led to Renee re-establishing her bond with Camilla, the one supporter of her relationship with Brayden. Three months into their rekindled relationship, an utterly smitten Renee 
with Camilla for emotional backing, ventured to a tattoo parlor and had Spiteri inked on the right side of her chest. One day, while navigating social media, Teresa, the mother of Renee, chanced upon a photo uploaded by Renee's former beau, Angus. She appreciated the image without any hidden intentions. Braden, noticing Teresa's online action, interpreted it as an intentional move to reignite a spark between Angus and Renee. He sent Teresa a highly aggressive and insulting message, denouncing her for disloyalty and criticizing her mothering skills for not endorsing her daughter's affection towards Bateri. His message was filled with fury and contained several harsh remarks. This episode further deteriorated the parents' opinion of Renee's partner, considering him to be discourteous and conceited. Although Renee tried to mend the situation, Teresa stood her ground. Only after several months did the mother consent to engage in a discussion with Brayden, proposing a condition that would allow Renee some autonomy while he remained incarcerated. If their bond endured this period, Teresa would reconsider her stance on him. To everyone's astonishment, the young man concurred. He reassured Renee of his undying love and intention to wed her upon his release, but in the meantime, he bestowed her with total freedom. Seizing this chance, Renee soon began a relationship with a co-worker named Ian. The Marsdens were delighted, finding Ian to be a stark contrast to Brayden. He was courteous and calm. They were hopeful for a new beginning, yet Spiteri, vigilantly observing Renee's life, noticed the shift. Discovering Ian, he started menacing him online, attempting to dissuade him from pursuing Renee, despite having granted her freedom. Renee implored Brayden to cease his intimidations towards Ian, yet in time, she and Brayden found a way back to communicating regularly, now under the guise of friendship. Renee maintained her calm and continued her liaison with Ian, believing she had amicably resolved matters with Spiteri. In October 2012, on a work-related journey, she snapped a selfie in her hotel chamber close to a mirror and shared it on a social platform, unprepared for Brayden's reaction. He spotted a pair of men's footwear in the image's backdrop and erupted in a jealous fury, charging her with being unfaithful. Renee found herself once again in the position of pacifier, clarifying that the shoes belonged to Ian, yet Spiteri's agitation persisted, and he even managed to secure Ian's contact details to menace him. Despite Braden's interference, Renee and Ian's bond flourished into an engagement during the festive period, though Braden's continuous involvement became a contentious point, prompting Ian to demand a choice between him and Braden. With Braden's impending release in the fall of 2013, Renee deliberated her options, but ultimately gravitated towards Braden, whom she deemed her soulmate. Endeavoring to mend their partnership proved arduous. Renee wrestled with emotional distress. Braden divulged that his father expected him to helm the family's lucrative construction venture upon his return, an aspiration he did not share. When Renee proposed he give his father's offer some thought, Braden lambasted her for being acquisitive and superficial, accusing her of pursuing the relationship solely for financial advantage, oblivious to his psychological and emotional state. Moreover, he perpetually berated her for her past with Ian, branding it as unfaithfulness and leveraging guilt. Caught in this toxic vortex, Renee felt immobilized, yet Braden occasionally reverted to a tender and nurturing demeanor, ensnaring her in a cycle of emotional exploitation. In the summer of 2013, as Camilla embarked on a family vacation to the USA, Renee found the perfect moment to finally break off her friendship with her for good. Distance made the separation easier, particularly because Zaidan had reverted to her earlier manipulative and possessive tactics, prompting Renee to feel apprehensive of her. Immediately after Camilla's arrival in the USA, Renee messaged her, requesting she cease all contact and act as if they were strangers should they cross paths in the future. Amid this personal upheaval, Braden informed Renee of his impending communication blackout due to a hearing for potential early release leaving her isolated just as she had distanced herself from Camilla. This period of solitude saw Renee consistently sending Brayden heartfelt texts, despite the absence of his responses, clinging to hope for any sign of communication. Her patience was tested until she finally received a reply from him, 
only to be taken aback by its curt and unsympathetic nature. That same day, Teresa was startled by a message from Spiteri, alleging that René was a risk to herself. This prompted a concerned confrontation between Teresa and René, who clarified that her relationship with Braden was over, but assured there was no truth to the self-harm claims. Eager to delve deeper, Renee confided in her mother her realization of Braden's true character and reiterated her well-being. Subsequently, she prepared herself for a night out with friends, stepping out in search of comfort and diversion amidst their company. On August 5, 2013, at precisely 5.49 p.m., Renee dispatched a heartfelt and lengthy message to her mother, conveying her affection and seeking pardon. Teresa promptly attempted to reach out to her daughter by phone, yet received no response. In a bid to grasp the situation, she contacted Camilla, who, although they hadn't spoken lately, had gotten a similar note. Camilla proposed they search for Renee at a likely spot, guiding them to a residence where, as Zaiden informed, resided Brayden's sister, but to no avail. Subsequently, Teresa informed the authorities of her daughter's absence, and eventually, police discovered Renee's vehicle in the secluded Watson's Bay, far from the urban center. Found within the automobile was an unused mobile phone of the past two months, a Valentine's card from Braden, and a photo montage of him. Etched in the dust on the vehicle's window read, I love you, Braden. The Marsden clan, along with several kin, ventured to Watson's Bay to seek Renee, uncovering her black ballet shoes. At that juncture, law enforcement was sealing the vicinity for investigation and advised the kin to await results at home. Teresa, restless, attempted reaching Braden, who neither answered calls nor acknowledged the vexed messages she dispatched, persuaded of his role in her daughter's vanishing. Subsequently, Renee's father made inquiries at the detention facility purported to detain Spiteri, only to learn no inmate bore that identity. Mark forthwith relayed his doubts to the police. When law enforcement initially probed Watson's Bay, Renee wasn't located, but they did uncover CCTV footage depicting her final moments. She was seen walking alone to a cliff's edge, leaping over a safety fence, pausing to look down, then using her phone to send three last texts before tossing it into the sea and following it herself. Her body was never recovered, Devastated by her abrupt disappearance, her family grappled with the reality that Renee might be gone forever. Their focus shifted to uncovering the recipients of her final messages and their contents. Investigation revealed Renee had sent 91 texts to Brayden before departing for Watson's Bay, with silence from him until just before she jumped, when she finally received a response. A peculiar similarity was detected in the grammatical patterns of texts, from both Camilla and Brayden, along with mirrored mood fluctuations. If Camilla displayed hostility towards Renee, Brayden exhibited anger and vice versa. Despite originating from two distinct numbers, the messages were traced back to a single sender, revealing Brayden Spiteri as a fictitious entity created by Camilla. Among the last communications on Renee's phone was a message from Brayden, breaking off their 18-month relationship, claiming he needed space. This led to Renee experiencing a severe emotional crisis, witnessed by her colleagues as she shook and wept uncontrollably. After regaining some composure, she made a brief 90-second call to the prison, ostensibly to Braden, as per the call records. A subsequent house search of Zidons under warrant resulted in the seizure of multiple mobile phones, a ripped letter from Renee to Braden, and another letter intact from Camilla expressing gratitude to Renee for introducing her to her soulmate, vowing repayment. Additionally, the man believed to be Brayden in photos, actually named Cameron, was discovered to be uninvolved, his identity unknowingly exploited in the fictitious relationship. Renee spent the last 18 months of her life believing she was in love, only to discover on the day of her death that Brayden wasn't real. Camilla confessed to deceiving her best friend by pretending to be Brayden. However, since there were no laws in New South Wales at that time against catfishing, the police couldn't charge her. She hadn't extorted money from Marsden to be accused of fraud. All she did was for her own entertainment or pleasure. In 2020, 
Renee's parents convinced authorities to investigate their daughter's death and how Camilla directly contributed to it. Zaidan was granted immunity in exchange for details of her deception. Camilla, who managed to escape accountability for her actions, claimed that she and Renee were in love. Because the Marsden family would never have accepted their relationship, they supposedly invented the character of Brayden as a cover for their relationship. Camilla also insisted she had no idea Renee would take her own life, but the victim's relatives believed the breakup between Brayden and Renee was revenge after Marsden definitively ended their friendship. Camilla was obsessively fixated on Renee but couldn't have her while remaining a woman, so she deceitfully involved her in these online relationships and created a male version of herself. Sadly, this cruel prank led to the death of a young woman. Currently, Camilla is known to have married, had a child, and is enjoying life, ultimately deciding to marry a man, realizing that same-sex romances were not her destiny. This is the end of the story. Like the video and leave your thoughts in the comments. This was Jeremy. See you soon.